If you are a Linux developer or you are preparing for a Linux developer role, so this video is for you. Hello everyone and welcome back to another video by Simply Learn. This is Anubhav and in this video we will be learning about Linux interview questions. But before we begin, if you haven't subscribed to our channel already, make sure to hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you will never miss any update from Simply Learn. So without further ado, let's begin and see what's in it for you. First. We will see the introduction to Linux. After that, we will see trends and recent changes in Linux commands. Moving ahead, we will see how to become a Linux developer. After that, we will see the opportunities and salaries of Linux developers. And after that, we will see Linux command interview questions. Linux platform gives its open source natures has integrated a wide range of innovation minds who have given their best to introduce world changing ideas into reality. Linux is basically an operating system which is popular for its efficiency as well as its performance. It can run on various hardware platforms manufactured by IBM, Intel and HP. Now. Let's see some trends and recent changes in Linux commands. Linux is supercomputing. The development and deployment of Linux powered supercomputers is a trend that shows no signs of abiding given the flexibility structure of the Linux system as well as the compatibilities it has. The usage of Linux as a supercomputer operating system is guaranteed to remain one of the most important Linux trends in 2022. Let's see the next point, new Linux based hardware. The Linux platform has gained a repulsion since Raspberry Pi and Chromebooks gained the attention of the particular domain of viewers. These Linux based components are breaking new grounds as the new pass. Thanks to their small from size and ability to perform routine tasks with ease, the platform has now witnessed advanced implementations throughout the prior calendar year. Now, the next point we will be discussing is the cloud and the Linux. Although Linux is popular in the technological community, it is going to continue to increase in popularity in line with the open-minded techniques of 2022. As cloud-based technologies and the Linux system are so interconnected, the Linux system is expected to grow with the cloud-based alternative. Now, let's see the next point which is Chromebooks and Chrome OS. Chrome OS has transformed into the most flexible operating system available in the market. Chrome OS just obtained the ability to connect with Google Play Store and run just about any Android app giving user one of the most trained web circuit experience possible. Talking into consideration the improvements on the operating system, it is too soon going to be on a quick survey towards possibilities, becoming the most flexible platform compatible on running Android and Linux softwares. Now, let's see how to become a Linux developer. Let us take a look at the required skills needed to make a career as a Linux developer. First one is learn C programming. The first and the foremost thing which is needed is learn C programming. Most of the part of Linux are written in C. If you want to contribute low level parts of the system, you should know the assembly language as well. However, intentionally it is important to learn the C language. Next step is to learn algorithms and data structure. To become a Linux developer, you should have a fundamental knowledge of data structure and algorithm. And algorithm is basically a step by step approach to solve a particular problem. On the other hand, data structure works on organization's data. Both these components help the programmers to solve the problem within a minute. The next step you should learn is operating system. Now that you have acquired some knowledge of the programming, the next thing on your to-do list should be learn everything about the operating system. And then do some programming. 
Competitive programming can help you master algorithms and data structures. It also shows you how to solve a program in a short period of time. A competitive programmer must be able to solve an issue in a short amount of time. Now, let's see the opportunities and salaries of Linux programmers. When it comes to Linux professionals, you have two choices. You can either work towards becoming a developer or you can go into administration. Furthermore, the professional options are not limited to Linux platform. They encompass the wide range of applications. The following are the areas where hiring managers are looking for hiring Linux developers. First one is system architecture. Linux system architecture salary in India ranges between 6.3 lakhs to 44 lakhs with an average annual salary of 21.1 lakhs. The next one is system administration. The average salary of a system administration in India ranges between Rs 2.4 lakh per annum to Rs 4.5 lakh per annum. The next one is Web Developer and Development. Linux Developer average annual salary in India ranges from Rs 3 lakh to 8.9 lakhs. And for Desktop and App Development, average starting salary for Linux Developer and App Developer is in India is Rs 3 lakh per year. Now, we'll move ahead with the Linux command interview questions. The first question that we will discuss is what is Linux? Linux is a Uni-based open source operating system. Linus Torvalds was the first to introduce Linux. The primary goal of Linux was to give a free and low-cost operating system for people who couldn't buy Windows, iOS or Unix. Now, the next question is, define Linux kernel. Is it legal to edit Linux kernel? The answer is, the Linux kernel is a low-level software system. It is used to keep track of resources and give a user interface. Yes, it is legal to edit Linux kernel. Linux is released under the general public license which is GPL and any project which is released under GPL can be edited and modified by the end users. Let's move on to the next question which is what is LILO? LILO denotes Linux Loader. It is basically Linux boot loader which loads Linux operating system into a main memory to start execution. Most of the computer systems are featured with boot loaders for certain versions for Mac OS or Windows OS. So, if you want to use Linux OS, you have to install a special boot loader for it. When a computer gets started, BIOS conducts small initial test and transfer control to the master boot loader. For from here, LILO loads the Linux OS and start it. The benefit of utilizing LILO is that it ensures a quick boot of the Linux operating system. Moving ahead, let's move on to the next question, which is, what are the basic components of Linux? The following are the basic components of Linux. First one is Shell. It is a Linux interpreter which is used for executing commands. The next one is Kernel. Kernel is the core part of the operating system which is used to manage hardware and operations. After that, the next one is System Utilities. These are the software functions which help users to manage their computers. The next one is GUI. GUI donates graphical user interface through which the user can interact with the system. But online CLI, GUI compresses buttons, images and text boxes for interaction. The next one is application programs. Software programs are designed to complete a particular task. Now, the next question is, which shell are used in Linux? The following are the most common types of shell used in Linux. The first one is Fish. Friendly interactive shell offers some special features such as web-based configuration, fully scriptable and auto-suggestions with clean scripts. The next one is Bash. Boreen again shell is the default for most of the Linux distributions. 
The next one is Z asset. Z shell offers unique features like startup files, file name generation, login or logout watching, and closing comments. The next one is CHS. C shell follows C like syntax and has features like spelling correction as well as job control. Now, let's move on to the next question. What is swap space? Swap space is the extra space utilized by Linux to temporarily keep concurrently running processes when RAM space is sufficient. When you start a program, it is stored in RAM so that the CPU can quickly retrieve data. If you have more running programs, then RAM can accommodate. The swap space is used to store these programs. The processor will now search for the RAM and swap space for data. Swap space is used in the form of execution of RAM by Unix. Let's move on to the next question, which is Differentiate between DOS and Bash. Bash is a command which is case sensitive and DOS commands are not case sensitive. In Bash, there are 8 characters for file name postfixed with 3 characters for the extension. And in DOS, no naming conventions are used. Again, Bash is used as an escape character and DOS is used in the form of directory spater. Now, let's move on to the next question, which is, what is file permission in Linux? The following are the three types of permission in Linux. First one is the read. It allows its user to open and read the file. The next one is write. It allows its user to open and edit the file. And the third and the last one is execute. It allows its user to run the file. The next question is, what are inode and process ID? Inode is a unique name provided by the operating system for each file. Similarly, process ID is also a unique ID provided to each process. What are Linux directory commands? Given below are the five main directory commands in Linux. The first one is PWT. It displays the path of the present working directory. The next one is is list all the directories and files in the present working directory. CD. It is used for changing the present working directory. RMDIR. It deletes a directory. And MKDIR. It is used to create a new directory. MKDIR is also known as make directory. Now, let's move on to the next question. What are the various processes states in Linux? Given below are the process states of Linux. The first one denotes ready. The process is ready to run. The second one running is the process has been executed. The third one is wait or block. This shows the process is waiting for the input. After that, it's completed or terminated. This process shows the process is completed execution or was terminated by the system. The last one is zombie. The process terminated by the information is still available in the process table. Let's move on to the next question. What are process management system calls? The following are the system calls used to manage the process. The first function is fork function. It is used for creating a new process. The next is a exec function which is used for executing a new program. The third one is a wait function. Wait until the process completes the execution. After that, it's exit function. It is used to exit from the process. After that, it's get PID function get the unique process ID of the process. And the last one is get PPID function gets the parent process unique ID. Let's move on to the next question. 
What are the redirection operators? The redirection operator is used for redirecting the output of the specific command as an input to another command. The following are the two ways to use this. The first one is this symbol which is overrides the file's existing content or creates a new one. The second one is this symbol which shows the add the new content to the end of an existing file or create a new one. Let's move on to the next question which is explain a latch. A latch is a temporary storage of device that is controlled by a training signal which can be either stored as 0 or 1. A latch is a primarily used to retain state information and has two stable states high output or 1 or low output or 0. As long as a latch is powered on, it can store one piece of data. The next question is, what is microprocessor? A microprocessor is a device which is used for execution instructions. It is a single chip device that fetches the instructions from the memory, decodes it and executes it. The following are the three basic functions which are carried out by a microprocessor. The first one is addition, subtraction, multiplication and division are example of mathematical operations. The next one is make decision based on the circumstances and then jump to the new different instructions as needed. Last one is move data from one position in memory to another. Now. Let's move on to the next question. How to rename files in Linux? There is no such particular command for renaming a file in Linux. However, you can use the copy or move command to renew a file. The first command which we use is move command. We write it like dollar sign mv which denotes at move old name and then the new name of the file like this only we will write a copy command in that there will be a dollar sign cp means copy old name of the file and then the new name of the file like that only if we want to delete a command we'll write dollar sign rm which denotes as remove and the file name Let's move on to the next question. How to write the output of a command to a file? You have to use the redirection operator. To do this, write dollar sign the command which you want to use and the greater sign and then the file name. The next question is how to copy files to a floppy disk? The following steps will guide you to copy file to a floppy disk. The first one is mount to floppy disk. The second one is copy the files. And the last one is unmount the floppy disk. Let's move on to the next question. How should we identify which shell you are using? Open the terminal and run dollar sign echo which is echo and then again dollar sign and shell all in capital. Let's move on to the last and final question for this interview question series. How would you sort the entities in a text file in ascending order? You can do this by using the sort command. For this you have to write the dollar sign sort sample dot text sample dot text is the file name that i am using here you can use the name of your file you which you want to do ascending order operation and with this we have reached the end of this video make sure to like and share it thank you for watching and stay tuned for more from simply learn Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.